Okay, here we go with the second part of our hound dog project. It's time to add some chords onto the bass line that we have already done. So at the end of last episode, this is what I was left with. I had a single track and I had the bass line programmed in, sounded like this. Okay, so time to add on the chords. The resources that you're going to need for this, you're obviously going to need your band lab file, and you're going to need this page of the Hound Dog resources as well, which you shouldn't be given, should you should have been given, sorry, I can't talk, you should have been given as a uh, printed copy. I will pop them up on the screen as well. But the really good news is that the notes, there are no new notes in this at all. We've talked a lot in lesson about how uh, rock and roll and the blues rely on primary chords. And the chords are exactly the same as the bass line. The difference is rather than playing separately, now we're going to play them all together to build up chords because that's the definition of a chord, more than one note played at the same time. So the first chord that we're going to need, let's put that back there actually, the first chord that we're going to need is this one, okay? C, E and G, uh, just like our bass line. Whereas before we were going like this and playing them separately, now we're going to play them together. Okay, so we're going to play them all at the same time. Importantly, on the resources, I have written the notes in the order that you play them. So it should have a C on the bottom, an E in the middle, and a G at the top. You can move the order around of chords. They're called inversions. But you get very, very different sound if you do that. So you must make sure that your C is at the bottom, your E is in the middle, and your G is at the top. And actually, I'm using my uh, left hand, which I shouldn't be for this one. I should be using my right hand. Because if you were playing this on a real piano, you'd have your bass line in the left hand and your chords in the right. So let's get on with this. First thing we're going to need to do is create another track. Very simple. Click on Add Track up here in the corner. And remember, it's a virtual instrument. Everything that we do in this project is a virtual instrument. So I'm going to click on that. It's given me a red colour. It might give you a different colour. It doesn't matter. The colour of it is uh, not important. But if you remember, at the beginning of the bass line, we recorded four bars worth of C, E, G on the bass line. That's exactly what we're going to do here as well. So I'm going to make sure that my playhead, playhead is at the beginning and I'm going to get my chords in the right place. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, you've got a bigger keyboard than me. I, I keep mine little so that... Uh, you can see easily on the camera. Okay, now the pattern that we're going to play, I'm going to play along with the bass line, goes like this. Okay, that sounds a bit scrappy because I've got a little bit of lag on my um, computer as I play and screencast at the same time. You won't have that problem. I'm going to have to work against it. Okay, so you literally play eight chords per bar. Okay, so well, that'll be 32 chords, right? And I've got to be nice and even. At the end of the project, last time I turned off the metronome so that I could play you a performance version. I've just turned it back on again. You might want to go slower for this. We've been up at around 140. I'm actually going to set myself to 80, give myself plenty of thinking time about this. That's going to have slowed it down a lot. Okay, it's going to give us plenty of thinking time. Don't worry about moving to the F chord or anything just yet. Uh, I've just slowed it down a bit. Now, sort of an optional extra, which makes this sound better. If you listen to the bass line, boom, 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 it creates this funky rhythm pattern. Now, you can create that funky rhythm pattern by pressing some of the chords that you play harder than others. If you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and you hit the one slightly harder, you get this. And you can hear that that maps out, that plots out the same rhythm as we had for our bass line. So if you can do that, that will mean that your chords sound even better. Okay, that'll mean your chords sound even better. So let's try it. Just going to do 32 C chords. On my right hand, I'm going to try and get that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. If you can't feel that rhythm pattern, 
don't worry about it because it will still sound absolutely fine. So I'm going to hit record. It's going to give me four pips and I'm going to do exactly that. Okay, now I've got terrible latency on my computer. So I'm really hoping that they have worked out roughly where they were supposed to be. Yeah, not looking too good, actually. There's my chords. I have 32 of them, I think, if I look through. Remember to quantize at this stage, okay? I've seen a lot of people starting this project and not bothering with this bit, and it makes it so much better for almost no effort. I'm going to put it on one eighth. And I'm going to click on quantize and I'm going to hope that everything has gone to the right place. Yes, it has. Great. Okay, so we've got our C chords. Now, if we remember what we did with the 12 bar blues sequence, we move up to an F chord. So this time it's going to be, let me get my page over. It's going to be this chord, so we have an F at the bottom, an A in the middle, and a C at the top. Okay, an F at the bottom, an A in the middle, and the C at the top. Now, you can do two hands if you want, but I would encourage you not to because that means you're not really developing your keyboard technique. So, F at the bottom, A in the middle, C at the top. And we're going to do two lots of eight, so 16 of that before it will change back. So, set it to bar five. I'm still on 80. 80 was a bit slow, actually. I'm going to go 100. Just check that all still fits. Yep, all good there. So I click on bar five. I'm going to do 16 F chords. Okay, there we go. Let's check that they've appeared. Latency wasn't so bad that time. Latency is the fancy word for when you've got delay between what you're hearing and what you're seeing happens all the time with uh, these kind of loops that we're creating with uh, with video and, and sound and that kind of thing. That's just what we've got. Quantize there. I use the uh, eighth again because I'm playing eighth notes. And actually that's worked out quite nicely. Good. Thinking where do we go next? We go back to the C chord for two bars. So we're going to be C, E and G again this time around. Two bars of 16 notes. Yeah, why on earth was I on 80 before? 80 was too slow. It was really hard to feel it at that speed. Should have stayed at 100. I'm going to select all of those. Going to quantize all of those in the same way. Sounded pretty good. Let's just check. Okay, fantastic. And then I'm going to go on to bar 9. We want a bar of G chords. At this point, just like we did with the bass line. So we are here. Okay, so we need eight G chords. G is G at the bottom, B in the middle, D at the top. Okay, there's our G triad. Going to do eight of those in bar nine. Here we go. Okay, nice and easy. That should have come out quite well. Quantize again, select all of them, click on quantize. Bob's your uncle. Bar 10 is a bar of F chord, F, A, and C. Let's put that in now. Now, the only thing I'm not liking about this at the moment is it keeps starting me in different places. Sometimes it's giving me two bars of running, sometimes it's giving me one bar of running, and I can't see a reason why that would be. So watch out, folks, when you're uh, when you're doing your recording. I can hear where the chords are moving, so I'm relying on my ears more than anything else. Well, that's not very helpful of Band Lab, actually. And the last one, do you remember the plonk that we did at the end of the bass line? Well, we've got a plonk again of just one C chord. C at the bottom, E in the middle, G at the top. Okay, so I'm just going to put on the plonk. Okay, so that time it just gave me one uh, bar of intro again, so I don't know. It's, it's trying to annoy me. Band Lab is uh, is annoying me on purpose. And there we go. We have a chord part. There we 
we go. There's um, some basic uh, sequence version of the whole piano part for Hound Dog. We're going to do one little extra. Okay, do you remember me saying at the beginning that uh, it sounds better when it's done as one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two? Okay, now if you can't do it while you're playing on the keyboard, and actually mine hasn't come through brilliantly. We can change how hard the note was pressed afterwards. This setting is called Velocity, and you can see that it says Velocity just up here. So if I click on these notes here, that's our first chord, okay, our very first chord. And the velocity at the moment of those is set to 102. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to turn it up to the maximum set. Ooh, I'm going to turn it up to the maximum setting, which is 127. Now that chord should really punch out. Let's just listen to that. Oh, a bit of lag in my computer there. Did you hear that? Okay, so a really heavy accent, we call that, on the first note. Now, if I do that with the fourth chord as well, because remember, we've got one, two, three, one, two, three. So the second one is on the fourth chord. I'm going to do the same thing and turn it up to 127. Oh, that went to 123. Doesn't want to do 127 for some reason. How strange. Don't know why that would be. And I'm going to do it on the penultimate chord as well. 123 seems to be the maximum. On most doors, it's 127. For some reason, it's only going to 123 uh, on this one. You hear that? Okay, that really creates that pattern that fits in well with the bass line. So I'm going to do that to all of these. Okay, how's this sounding? Okay, and I'm going to do that, or you need to do that, going along for all of them. Okay, turn all of the first, the fourth, and the seventh chords up to maximum velocity. I'm not sure if there's a faster way of doing this. Can I work out a faster way? If you hold down shift, it lets you add different notes in. Oh, that might be a bit faster, actually. I don't know. Okay, then you can do them all at the same time. And I suppose you could do that with all of the chords. I don't know, that's quite a lot of clicking. Maybe it's easier to see when you do it like that. So remember, first chord, fourth chord, and seventh chord of each bar. It's all the F chords. Yeah, I think, I think that might have been a little bit faster. Uh, I'll keep doing it that way. So first chord, whoops, if you click in the wrong place, it's not helpful at all. Fourth and seventh. And do this bar as well. First, fourth, and seventh. Okay, turn them all up to maximum. I suppose I could do them all at the same time. I went to the G chord, so I, th I think this is a bit of a faster way. I'm holding shift on my keyboard to do this as I click so that I could, oh, and if you click in the wrong place, it messes you up if you're not concentrating. I was concentrating on talking to you, and I messed up my clicking. And you know what, I'm going to do the last chord at the same time. If you get them in the wrong place, just undo it. And I've made the decision, I'm going to put some on the, I'm going to put a heavy accent on the last plonk as well. So I'm going to turn all of them up. And that, oh, I've only gone to 110. Doesn't want me to go higher than 110. Not sure. There's some weird settings going on here with BandLab. Let's have a look how that sounds. Got some distortion coming through. I'm just going to turn my master volume down a bit. Oh, I've left the loop tool on. And that sounds just a little bit funkier. There we go. Happy with that. 
So that is the end of episode two. That is the chord part sorted and ready. Do not forget at this stage to click on save or you will not have any work when you get to your assessment and you wouldn't want that. So try it yourself, see how you get on. Uh, and by the end of this, you should have a chord part to go in with your bass part. I will see you in the next episode where we're going to add in the melody. See you later.